All right, guys, and we're back to Rooster on Podcast. I am in a special place, though, right now. We are at Just Train Gym and Heartbeat Production Studios. I am going to interview my man, Boss. Now, Boss obviously has worked with Kevin Hart. He also works with a laundry list of celebrities. But again, he is a very motivational person. We are going to have a great conversation with this individual. Now, before we do that, I have to shout out the sponsors, Athletic CBD. Use my discount code DERU at your final checkout to get 20% off of CBD products that will help you recover from any nagging injury or any bumps and bruises that you may have. Also, make sure you check out my mentorship program that is now available at my website. Go to DerewStrong.com and also all of my programs are listed there too as well. Make sure you get it if you're trying to train and do the methods and protocols that I put together for my athletes and myself. Go ahead and check it out, DerewStrong.com. Now, let's get into the interview. Mind somewhere else to keep going. That little voice in your head is trying to stop you from getting to where you want to be. Be successful and keep moving forward. With your host and world renowned strength and conditioning coach, Phil Delru. So, both, what's going on, bro? Man, uh, I see you just got a workout in. Fresh off a workout, yeah. feeling good. Endorphins are high right now. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'm, let me make myself feel like I'm at home a little bit. <laughs> All right, the seat's off. It's off. This power ain't working. All right. But no, <laughs> no, no. Um, somebody didn't play the power bill. Pay the bill? bill. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why we got, uh, that's why we got the, uh, the um, automatic treadmills because, you know, we yeah, never yeah. know if the bill's going to get paid. I like We're running off solar energy around here. I'm, now That's that I'm energy really. that we create, the energy that we put out. <laughs> you know what I mean? We take it in and then we put it out. You yeah, feel what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'm solar energy power right now. I hear you. Yeah, right, you. yeah, yeah. You know what's funny, man? I could hear you back there and I was like, man, I don't know how he does it. How old are you, by the way? I'm 36. 36, still yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, still yeah. got it. Well, still got it, man. It's never, it's never going. It's never old. old. <laughs> yeah. So let me tell you something. Yeah. I used to be like that. I used, okay. to, be, I used to be hype. Okay. And then some, something clicked in me. I was just like, you know what? I think I need to calm down because if I don't, Right, I'm probably gonna have a heart attack by the time I'm 30. No, oh, wow, yeah. you felt like that. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm good. Yeah. I'm, good. Uh, I'm about to say, come no, I'm on. Still now. with it. I'm still. You, with I'm about it. to say, you got to be well, with it all. Well, again, you you need that energy. Yeah. You need yeah. to give them that energy. For me, for I sure. work with a lot of fighters, and for sure, they're kind of self motivated. For sure, but for sure. You you have to be that motivation for some of those individuals. Isn't that correct? Yeah, but you know what? You, I agree, right? Mm -hmm. I, I signed up to hold people accountable, but mm -hmm. I think the number one thing that I I signed up to do is be me. Yeah, you yeah. feel what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. And then that's the indirect reflection. So I'm not putting on, I'm, I'm going out here every day being me and then that's contagious. That's what I want to share. That's what I want to push forward. Um, I'm not putting on, like yeah. you walk in the gym, it's either get it or get, get lost. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. That's just kind of how we, we roll. It's not like a, for me, I think authenticity leads and that wins, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rather it may take you a little bit longer. Gotcha. I lead with authenticity. I lead with, you know, humility. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that's when the doors of opportunity start to open for you. You know what? That That's a good segue, right? Yeah. Because, and I think you've been doing this a pretty long time now, so you know how to yeah. do that. Yeah. But, um, so where are we at right now? So okay. right now, we're at uh, Heartbeat Studios. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but Just Train Studio is right down the street, right yeah, up yeah. in the same building. But yeah, man, so um, my one of my brother's close friends, partners, um, Kevin, obviously we've done a lot together. And so opportunity came up with XD Fifth. We were opening up a gym and we were starting some businesses together. Mm -hmm. and I was about to open the gym a little further away and I was like, why don't we just keep this in-house and just kind of continue to build and yeah. have, you know, he shoots a bunch of shows here. So when athletes come in, people come in, it's an opportunity for them to train yeah. and, you know, create an in-house facility that we run and we own and operate. And so we're looking to upgrade here real soon. Things are doing well. Nice. So very, very fortunate and blessed. That's awesome. I mean, so how did all this get started? Because I know, I mean, you started in Houston, right? Mm -hmm. You were in Houston. For sure. For sure. How'd you make it out here and how'd you start doing what you're doing now? <laughs> you know what, man? Um, how did I start? It, it, it started from first of all, I played sports. Football mm -hmm. was my was my segue to coming to LA originally. I mm -hmm. went to JUCO here. Then I left school. I went to I got, didn't get in Arizona State because mm -hmm. of grades, and I went to Northwest Missouri State. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to Atlanta. So that's why I opened my first gym. So gotcha. that's when you got you know that's when I got in Georgia. Yeah. yeah okay. So I opened up a sports training facility. Mm -hmm. It was fitness was not my way. I did it as a by I, it was doing it as a by time while yeah. I was trying to figure out what I really wanted to do sure, because yeah. I, the NFL didn't work. It didn't go on my path and mm -hmm. so from there you know i got one phone call one phone call um <clears throat> neo called me 
never and I tell people this all the time to kind of go into this is like everybody's looking to say how do you become a celebrity trainer yeah I don't like that. I don't think you try to become, you just become great at what you're trying to do. 100%. And then those opportunities. And so I had that opportunity and every day I woke up and I treated it like I was on an internship and I had something to prove. And that compounded into people starting to see what I was doing and mm -hmm. understanding the accountability. And I held myself accountable and consistent for the things I said I wanted. Not Nobody else could, nobody else could say or do what I wanted and so I just wanted to be as honorary yeah. and, and loyal to the people that gave me the opportunity and to this day my some of my the first people that gave me a chance are still some of my closest friends yeah. um you know going back to Neo and even those clients back in Atlanta when I first started all those mm -hmm. women you know I started off training women that was mm -hmm. my big clientele yeah, boot camps and stuff boot camps um yeah. I did athletes at night in the morning <clears throat> it was all um, women boot camps all women five yeah. six seven boot camp boot camp then at night from starting at three o'clock the elementary kids Kids, middle school, high mm -hmm. school kids, sports performance. Then later on at night, we did boot camps again. Mm -hmm. And so, but I was in there all day long, starting at 5 a.m. Nice. So the four o'clock wake up was <laughs> was real and it still is real. Oh, you know for what I mean? Sure, yeah. yeah. And that's funny because, like, every, I think every person needs to go through that grind stage, you know, and, and it's obviously progressed and it manifests its own destiny sure. and what you've done and what you've accomplished as you can see is through the hard work and dedication and your passion for what you do so now what's the goal what are we doing now man for me it's continuing to be a leader in the space right but entrepreneurship right i'm a i'm, I'm an entrepreneur through and through yeah. i'm trying to figure out how to be a better leader i'm trying to figure out how to be a better uh executive of task right mm -hmm. and so um i, I just want to lead um and, and bring as many people up as i possibly can through sure. this journey of opportunity when i can have a conversation with somebody how can i that may not be my strong suit how is that somebody else that i'm connected to well how can we elevate and build something super super special because fitness you know I, I don't i look at it as it's, it's a full body of work because fitness is, can be redefined by him 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 everybody here because what i just did may not fit you but you may be physically fit mm -hmm. and so what i want to do is i want to connect to people but the way i've approached things is through gamification mm -hmm. right i want to create a game how do we create a game through fitness how do we create a game through how i approach my task at work right okay. and so that's the, that's the way i want to do it because nobody wants to feel like it's work yeah. when you look at <clears throat> you know me and kev talk about this a lot when you look at apple apple created the simple operating system and so you know um you got they got the remote and you got three buttons i don't care who you are you can work an apple yeah, yeah, remote. Yeah. you know what i mean uh -huh. you go to in and out it's only four things on the menu you guys live in florida but that's yeah. a restaurant now, we've been here. there a couple yeah. times already. yeah <laughs> yeah right so you go to chipotle chipotle says here we go this is all you got right so yeah. so gamifying it and keeping it fun but also keeping it simple that's one yeah. of the things that i love because every for me <clears throat> Not to, you know, smart people are great, but I think you have to have some sense of intelligence in order to understand trend and figure out how things are going to go in order to manipulate and push things forward yeah. um, for the better good of kind of what you're working in in the capacity. Nice, nice. It's funny, it's funny how you say the gamification. I like that because you mentioned Apple Steve Jobs, and one of his big things was combining the arts with, like you said, intelligence, science. So, like I said, it's bringing together two different worlds that you would think have nothing to do with each other. Yeah. So it can be fun and interactive. So I think that's a big thing. Yeah, man. I think, I think my, my approach is psychology. Like, I'm not a psychologist yeah, by any means. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, you, you, but, but how do I approach somebody, right? Like, am I, how do I motivate somebody? It may, for me to get somebody, whether it's in a gym or uh, whether I'm working in, 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 in corporate America, mm -hmm. I understand what what they're working on, what their passions are. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my clients is a super Pokemon fan. Sounds crazy. He's You know, he's a star and he loves Pokemon. So I always, I, I had to tap into Pokemon at a time to motivate him to understand what was, the, then I found out that these Pokemon people had inner power. So I'm like, you tired, but what about this Pokemon character that got yeah, this yeah, inner strength that, like you know that. what I'm saying? Like so that. you got to start to dive deeper into your craft. And so yeah. for me, I just made it fun. So I, for sure. I found out something about Pokemon that I didn't know, and I used it to, you know, to tap into the psyche of, of the individual. And so yeah. that's what I—that's really what I'm working on—is just kind of mastering my craft. And so um, mastering my craft is learning and learning from great people around me. And so gotcha. entrepreneurship is what I'm truly, truly thriving to kind of lead the way on. Gotcha. So you go on tour with Kevin, don't you? Yeah, I, I travel tour yeah. full time. Yeah. I mean, so how I work is that, with Kevin though? in the full capacity. 
you know, listen, man, that's my he's my partner. So yeah. I <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so when I when I look at Kev as my brother, mm -hmm. and, and then we do business together. I'm, I'm I'm in, and then when I gotta go, I gotta go, right? So sure. I traveled to Saudi Arabia. He, you know, I was just on a movie. Mm -hmm. um, I came home early, right? Because we got we got things that we gotta, you know, we built the business, right? So you just can't, I can't abandon everything, right? Uh -huh, yeah. And so we got a team, but at the same time, you know, in the process of small business, you still gotta keep your eyes on things and continue to. To push that energy forward, so sure. I'm fortunate enough to have some super great people around me, and and it, it continues to elevate. But then I also had to have that conversation with Kev in the very beginning. So now it's manifested. It's like if you just want a trainer, I may not be that guy, right? Yep. But if you wanted somebody to kind of elevate and push the things forward, if you look at our relationship and what mm -hmm. he's been able to help me do, whether it been Nike Rally Health, <clears throat> you know, most recently financial fitness with J.P. Morgan Chase, yep. um, we're working on you know so many different things. There's mm -hmm. a, another big announcement that's about to happen here in the next few weeks so you know we're doing some things that just we didn't we we wanted to become a dynamic duo yeah. you know what i'm saying and so then from there i had a responsibility to do what i said i was going to do and i just wake up every day with that responsibility gotcha so with the people that you train this list i don't want you to name anybody but who is the demographic? We talked about that a little bit, but right now, man, and, and it's crazy because I don't want to sound contradictory. You may go back in the beginning of this video <clears throat> and say, "Well, he said don't try to be a celebrity trainer," and, mm -hmm. and and it's not about it's the high net worth individuals that choose to come in the door, and and so we treat we created this customer concierge experience so they get to come in so i work with all type of entertainers you know from from at first that was a part of my career i just didn't want to work with rappers i wasn't i'm not sure why um but you know you got you i'm working with producers uh uh athletes i mean comedians i mean um executives you know ceo so we, we we touch everybody but you know our number one thing is obviously um cultivating an experience right no matter who you are whoever you walk through that door what how are you going to leave feeling better the workout is cool we want you to and we want you to reach a result but what's your mental like mm -hmm. that's what i'm trying to tap into i'm trying yeah. to get you to tap into like this super mental game mm -hmm. of, of like this is only one hour of your day yeah. right or 40 say we do 45 minutes yeah. i'm trying to like how do you take this same energy from a workout and go and say i'm i'm the leader at this and this mm -hmm. and this and whatever those tasks are and so that's that's really what you know just train is the mind and the body of follow we're trying to really captivate the mind so you can push not just in the gym but every aspect of your life you yeah. know what i mean so yeah speaking of the mind and body because that's that's literally my thing yeah so do you feel like how they care themselves in the gym i'm big on how you do one thing is how you do most things yep absolutely so you feel like when you do your workouts with them are you more emphasizing like how can i get their mindset in a certain way because obviously you want them to push hard or run hard or whatever maybe but do you like kind of put a seed in their head like I'm gonna give them a tidbit of advice or information so they can carry that that's, throughout their day. It's all it's it's a mindset approach. Everything from the moment you walk in the door, from the moment you go through a consultation, you know. I've been in this business long enough to know if a person is mentally ready, ready. Rather it's um, <clears throat> rather we're talking about a business partnership or rather we're talking about fitness goals. I know if you're highly committed to where you're trying to go based on what you're saying and the mental focus and your your sacrifice, right? A lot of people say a lot of things, but you don't see that sacrifice that yeah. that comes. So it, it tells itself in time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It tells itself. So you said it best. Like you, you, we we talked about it this morning. Oh, you cool. You were cool for three months. Month four. Oh, I oh your true colors came out because you were. You know yeah. that's really who you are. Yeah. And so and, and there's no we we are judging, but I'm not judging by default. I just don't want to be over there. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's what you. I'm not. I, you still a good person. Sometimes they're good people. They just don't line up with your trajectory of growth where you're trying to go. Sure. And so the mindset doesn't reach. And so sometimes you just shift them out of the funnel but some most of the time people tell on themselves if they're really in it you know that's to go enough. yeah that's it so let's talk about that because when you get somebody in here what's the process of them actually getting you as a trainer as far as like assessing them or just like interviewing them based off of not just who they are that's that's different i'm talking about as a person you may you may be like right, i'm just not the person for me or yeah let's do this but you know what everybody I want to help everybody, yeah. right? But for me, <clears throat> I got to make sure I'm spending my time wisely. Sure. So individuals that are highly committed and highly driven and focused on what they are motivate me too. It's mm -hmm. not just a one-way street. When I see someone, one of my clients thriving in their career, yeah. it, it, it motivates me. But just because you're thriving in your career doesn't mean that we align. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Also, because your personality may not meet mine. Not out of arrogance, but you have to protect the space of everybody else, yes. right? Because we've created an environment of no judgment, come in, you, we may talk loud, you know, 
you saw some women on the other side of the gym mm-hmm. that were in there. They were completely non-athletes, right? Yeah. Um, but they, they're used to it, and they want to come back, and they want to be around. Oh, I heard so, it. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like you that's the environment we want to create no matter who you are. So, yeah, sometimes <clears throat> for me, I don't have an ego based on who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a, I, I want to know my ego drives off how you treat people, gotcha. you know what I mean, and, and who you are to people and what's your effort that you're going to put out every day. Are you going to be a complainer? I don't got time for complainers, right? Yeah. Because then I go, I don't want that. I don't want to live in the space of complaining. Yeah. Like either we see something and we understand that that's just one of those obstacles that, you know, um, I don't know if you guys ever heard this, life is like a storm. Yeah. You're the in one, just got out of one and headed into one. You feel what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? I don't want to feel like I'm always in a storm every time I'm, I'm training with you. Sure. You feel what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, and so, and then, and then that's a trickle effect them, mm-hmm. how I go out about like I don't follow blog sites I don't listen to all that trash shit on the yeah. internet about other people because yeah. I, I need to focus on yeah. the positive the positive and it's not like people say well that's that's a, no that, that's what that's my focus that's how I want to live my life and that's what I'm gonna do like I don't need that negative energy around you know what I mean yeah. and so I do my best you know we talk about a little here and there but at the end of the day it's alright let's go mm-hmm. let's mm-hmm. get to the ground one of my other friends um, we were talking <coughs> weeks ago and you brought up a perfect point and we called it mental equity so mm-hmm. think of it just like business equity 1000% like where you're giving that energy like if you're in a storm with someone like say combative that's time and thoughts that you feel a lot into something more beneficial and now you drain you finish the session you got like four more clients you're like dang I feel like I just worked the whole day yeah man you know you, you touched on the word equity I use mental equity sweat equity financial equity mm-hmm. whatever in any capacity in which, which what you're giving off you know what I mean and so you, you, you rang that bell people don't truly understand that people a lot of people and this is what makes it difficult a lot of people just want to go through the motions mm-hmm. and that's okay I'm just not a go through the motions kind of guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. We heard that again. Like I said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no, that that's that's great, man. So what I did want to ask you, based off of your financial success, mm-hmm. you know, um, using a platform as your passion, but allowing yourself to do things that you love to do and make a profit off of that. I have a lot of coaches here, a lot mm-hmm. of personal trainers that are looking to do that. They love what they're doing, but they may not be making that financial increase. How is it that you were able to monopolize this passion of yours? I, <clears throat> so for me, number one, again, I, I took my ego away. Mm-hmm. I have an ego. I dimmed it, right? Yeah. Because I knew that I needed to walk into new situations and learn. Number, and, I, and what I did was I undervalued and oversold, yep. right? So that's where you have to understand where a lot of people in this industry are like, well, I'm worth this, I'm worth this. You may be worth that, but is your are you there yet? Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so understanding how do you get there is being consistent, being accountable, and then people start to go, damn, okay, he he does deserve this, mm-hmm. right? And so that's where it is, and just continue to, to chip, 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 chip away at your craft, right? Like, be, if this is what you want to do, when you sign mm-hmm. up to help people, signing up to help people is not just the workout. Yeah, That's what that's what a lot of trainers misunderstand, and that's the one thing, it, you're not just helping people go through a workout, yeah. right? Sometimes you're helping them fight a mental battle. You may be fighting them, they may be going through some, uh, some financial issues, they may be dealing with a bad husband, they may be dealing with some kids, they may be dealing with a bad wife so you you also embody therapy you feel what i'm saying and so this mental therapy that you coming in and helping people through is so much stronger so dedicate yourself to being positive dedicate yourself and then you'll see yourself start to monopolize when you super hyper focus on your craft and then ultimately surround yourself it's i I was listening to the scripture and it says who the five closest people around you uh, are who you are and one of the things I never understood it until it started to happen. They say, you, and, and I, I, listen, I don't, I don't lead with money. I'll be any one of my people will tell you around me like yeah. that's just a result of. Yes. You feel what I'm saying? But I don't lead with money. But the five, clo- I didn't understand it at the time. It said the five closest people around you are who you are. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So if you got bad people around you and you you do this circle right here and you go, okay, Darnell, Jesse, Andrea, Aisha, Crystal. Name my brothers and sisters, by the way. <laughs> but I, but if they're toxic, where you got this person, you, you you may have to, you know, not my family is amazing, so I'm using them as the 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 point. Mm-hmm. Damn. When you hang around money, you're going to get you something. You hang around positive energy, you're going to get you something. You hang around motivation, you're going to get you something. It starts to become of you. 
Yes. You feel what I'm saying? And if you don't want that, you, you, you most of the time you get excluded from the conversation. Yep. You yep. feel what I'm saying? And so that's what I've been able to do. And so to any trainers out there, make sure you're surrounding yourself around people that number one are making you better. If you're trying to elevate your game and understand how to make more money, you need to hang around people that are obviously making more money. Right? But don't be in it for the money. Be in it for the craft of. Yep. And then the money will soon come, I promise you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's to just train the mind and the body to follow. If you if you train the mind on the things that are are, are important to the business. People will start to see that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Going back to that Steve Jobs moment, he said, if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. You just Sometimes you just got to stay, stay, stay. Yeah. This gym wasn't always popping. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just train wasn't always a thing, but I believed in the motto of just train. Like, even when people was like, why you just don't call it Ron Everline? I'm like, bro, like, I don't believe in just making it about me. Like, yeah. it was very easy. Just train. People say, what up, Justin? I'd be like, how did they get Justin out of just train? But, you know what I mean? But it's okay. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? But it's okay. But for me, it wasn't, I didn't sign up for this just to be about me. You know, I signed up to, for this to be a platform to continue to go out and for multiple people to use. But it was, I, it was hard you know what i mean like people don't understand like it was a lot of sacrifice I, I mean when saudi arabia was not saudi arabia i was i was in saudi arabia three four months at a time a year um you know but i had to make that sacrifice and now mm. to go back now 10 years later and see what they've done and how they've accomplished and what we're doing over there is yeah. amazing but sometimes it may take you 10 years fast forward let me give you a story you know trainers and, and, and just entrepreneurs in general Sell your core. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys know C4. You drinking C4 right now, right? Yes, yeah. But but this is this is a this is a real fucking story. So, a lot of times people chase the money. I'm gonna give you a prime example. And when I was coming up, <clears throat> I would tell the guys on the team. I remember telling like there was a financial opportunity ten times greater than uh, Sell your core, mm -hmm. right? But Sell your core had been in the business. I think at this time I've been with them five going on six years I had, they were 12 years in and every other company were a two-year-old company but they were offering more money they were offering me these clothes and we had a nike deal. i'm like i don't need nike clothes like i already got a nike deal like what are, you know what i mean yeah. and so fast forward to i said you know i'm gonna go with this company i believe in their their, their uh, longevity right there yeah. what they've been able to do five years later six years later i now have i'm a partner in a company right <laughs> and so that changes I stayed in the game every year. Then we started doing longer deals. And so mm -hmm. I started to be a part of different conversations. They didn't just give me that. Yeah. They were like, okay, he has influence. Let's try this. Yeah. Then they tried it another year. Then mm -hmm. they said, okay, we got on a phone call and I took it a bit further. I said, hey guys, are we thinking about this? Not just for myself, but mm -hmm. our, so you, you know what I mean? I just, I knew what I wanted, but it took me six years to get here. Now, six years later, mm -hmm. I can, I can say at the top of the mountain, I'm an equity partner or a share partner with, with, with Cellucor. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's a that's a game changer to understanding to these trainers that it may take you six years. It may take you 10 years. Uh, <clears throat> my boy, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he mm -hmm. says, uh, "You everybody knows DJ, right? He goes, uh, hard work don't guarantee success, but a damn sure give you a better shot at it. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So you, chip, keep chipping away at that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Keep, keep, don't give up. And so a lot of people, they don't want to stand a fight long enough. They don't want to stand the fight long enough. Their loyalty falls off. Their mental fall off. And motivation is like bathing. We need it every day. Zig Ziglar. I don't know if y'all. I listen to quote. Zig Ziglar is the ultimate OG. Yeah, you know what I mean? And so that's where it's at. So all these trainers, all these entrepreneurs understand that you got to continue to fucking understand. If, you, if you're motivated, understand that, motiva that you got to fight. I'm easily motivated. In the morning, I may wake up and go, damn, I'm so blessed. I may look at something in my kitchen like, man, I got a Keurig. I remember when I didn't have a Keurig. I didn't yeah, even know what real. a Keurig was. Yeah, know it, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I remember when that didn't even, like, what was a Keurig? And so then I'd be like, man, I got to go. I want some more Keurigs. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I got to go get it. So you, yeah. whatever that motivation, now I wake up, I see my wife, I see my son, I see, you know, the Chardé and Chris or the team, and then the shit continues to motivate me so it's not this one thing it just changes every second because motivation is that but <clears throat> the thing is, is you got to continue to understand where you're trying to go and that's the that's when you go okay this is the right now motivation this is the long term yeah i didn't know that the sell your core deal was gonna happen it was the hope you feel what I'm saying? And so you just you just gotta keep chipping, you just gotta keep keep working. Yeah, you're increasing your value daily, which okay. that opens up doors for every opportunity. Compound interest effect. It's it's the small things done over the period of time ultimately lead to the big deal. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The slight edge, right? What are you doing? It's it's like there was when you're training, right? Say we're lunging, 
from here to here. And every time you get to that line for the whole month, you stop right before the line. But we're supposed to go to the line, through the line. Mm -hmm. Now, if I count your steps every way, that's two steps. And we do that every day. You add that up times 30, you just 60 steps shorter than where you could have been. 60 reps shorter than where you could have been. Gotcha. That's the same thing in life. Yeah. Right? Every time you take that one step shorter, every time you take that that's one it. thing, you, you just hold it. It, that shit adds up. Yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? So everything's linear. Like yeah. things, every effort adds up to the end goal. Like you yeah. said, you was in Saturday, but they didn't think like, oh, I'm gonna be here. It's yep. like I'm gonna do this right now. Yep. Sacrifice how, how much months you was over there. Yeah, three, four months. Yeah. Three, four months. So that, three, yeah. four months you like had to go on hold. Yeah. A lot of people won't do that for two weeks. Yeah, for sure. Let alone mm -hmm. three months. For sure. Would, would that open up the opportunity for the trainers to start to travel? Right? Most people don't know we have a team of trainers that travel for just train. Yes. And and you know what I mean? It's not just me. You know what I mean? And so that's where the people, you know, that's where you start to damn, like that door open and then that door open for this person and then that door open for that person. Mm -hmm. And so it just it's a continued effective life. And you said something linear, right? Had a conversation with somebody uh recently about uh nothing is linear. Nothing is linear, right? We go in the gym, bodybuilders, they linear. All right, we're going to leg extensions, no disrespect to them, but we're going to do this. It's straight, but I, nothing is a straight line that I'm doing. I know there's going to be some bumps and some roses and some shit like that. And go so, back. yeah, you know what I mean? So, once you understand that and you, you respect it, right? I have a high level of respect and gratitude for the grind. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I am grateful for the grind. I'm grateful that I'm able to be in this situation and continue to push it forward every day. You know what I mean? And so, um, that's. So, I want to get back a little bit because we all play football. I got my brother yeah. here. Okay. He okay. started with me when I was in Little League. Okay. He played high school football with okay, me. Okay. Okay. I played, I played for Alabama State. Oh, nice. So, how was that growing up, man? You grew up in Texas. We grew up in Florida. Yeah. We already know how this goes. Yeah, all right? bro, it go. Let me tell you something. I played with a bunch of Florida guys. Listen, I know you're from Texas, bro. But nah, we put, right out, now, we, we put out some of the best athletes. I know you want to. For sure, for sure. I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah, I'll give yeah, you that. Yeah. But let's but, look but, at the but stats all, right all now. Y'all are elite. Y'all are elite. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we from South Florida. We ain't okay, from up there. Okay, okay. We're from okay, South Florida. Okay, okay. So I got to get How do you think, because I know, and we all know, playing the sport, right? Playing you know, whatever sport it is, but especially a team sport like football, how did that mold your abilities to lead mm -hmm. and also be successful in what you're doing now? For me, bro, <clears throat> and this may sound really, really crazy, um, for me, number one, teamwork always is about the win, but also understanding that I may not like everybody on my team, but we got a common goal, mm -hmm. and that is to win. You feel what I'm saying? And that's what football taught me. It's like I remember seeing – Joe Holt, wow, well, sorry, Joe, but uh, I was about to say his full name, but uh, call him out. Yeah, but I remember having some beefs with Joe, and then at the end of the day, it was like one, once it was game day, Friday night dinner, it was like, bro, we all had the mission to understand that we had to go out here and work in the same accord to win, yeah. and so that's translated into business, right? Gotcha. Because at the end of the day, you got to work in the same line as your teammates. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so sports, sports is it's taught like my son's gonna play sports, right? Yeah. It taught me. Everything. It, I mean, how to how to deal with stress, how to deal with not. So, I mean, for me personally, mm -hmm. I wouldn't. I would know what where I would be without sports. The failure, like me dealing with the fact that I didn't make it to the NFL. My cousins, Derek Johnson, Benny Manuel, Birdie Manuel, Ernie Manuel. Like these are like first cousins. You know, Derek Johnson got drafted first round. I'm coming right behind him. My dream didn't come true, and I'm like, damn. But you know, rather than going and being depressed, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna hit the block until my feet hurt to slap. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna beat the block. I'm gonna keep hitting the ground. And I was like, well, you know, the analogy. I, I, don't let that go over your head. I'll say it again. I'm gonna beat the block until my feet hurt to slap. And so you know, <laughs> that your feet never gonna hurt that concrete. So you better get up every day and beat it. Yeah, yeah. And that was my. That's what I had to do. And nobody believed in me. I remember telling people like, we're gonna create this training company. We're gonna create. Everybody thinks I, I, I like this quantum leap of success just happened for me. You know what I mean? Like, oh, boss got Kevin. He had Neo. He worked with Diddy. He worked with all these people. He go to Saudi Arabia, bro. He, I, I, I have to build trust. Yeah. And so football taught me that though. You got to show up every day at practice, and when even when you make a bad play, get back in there. Come on. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. got to get back in there. You got to let that bad play go so you can make sure. a good play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if you harp on that bad play, yeah. It's gonna be over, bro. You know, it's over. You missed that. You missed that. Were you fullback, running back? I played linebacker. Oh wow! Yeah. How tall are you? Right now, five eight. Oh man, like you, so you out. That's why. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, a lot of concussions. Lot, yeah, I know, bro. I played linebacker too. So you know when you missed that tackle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you ain't, you ain't, you ain't cut off on the edge, and you went. You yeah. thought you was gonna knock him. You go, okay, bro. 
to get up. I gotta make. I gotta make up for that. For you sure. know what I'm saying? But but another thing is in, in sports. What I learned is like, do you want the what's the, what's the what's that uh, thought that I said? Um, consistency over sensational. Mm, okay. Would you rather be consistent or a sensational football player, basketball player? Mm. LeBron is consistently great. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But. There's those guys that we remember being on the team where Russell Westbrook is consistently great, but consistency over sensational got one, two good games. Mm-hmm. Then you don't really hear from him for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Then all of a sudden, so I'm like, you know what? I remember having having that, man, boss, you killed it. And then it was like, the next week you don't do nothing. Hmm. It's like, hold up, bro. I don't want to be, I, let me let me chip away at the consistent. Let me go out every night mm-hmm. and get 10 plus tackles. Let me, if I if you get a sack, cool, but you, gonna, you can count on me for my 10 plus. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's rather than the, the, the you know what I mean. So yeah, anyway. that's the that's the guys looking at the scoreboard too much. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I believe that if with anything, and even with the small wins that you get, you still have to learn from your mistakes that you did, even when you won the game. One so thousand. if you're doing stuff and you're successful, always look and self-assess the situation because you can always level up. Right. I I agree. Yeah. So all right. So now we we'll get back. So you played college. You went to JUCO, right? So. What'd you study, by the way? Um, business marketing management. So I, <laughs> excuse me, shit. That's a, uh, that's not a, you know what I'm saying? I know y'all. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was there for football. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, it's funny because like, they were like, what did you declare when I was, when I was at Alabama State? Man, I honestly, I, there was nothing but, I was just like, I'm just playing football. Like, yeah, that's all, bro. You know, but I look at it now, I'm like, eh, maybe I should have really took it a little bit more serious, but, you oh. know. But at the end of the day, it all worked out. Got yeah. my exercise science degree, but I still get it because I was more so involved, heavily involved in being the best person I can be, you know, and that would be on the field. Yeah. Even though, you know, it didn't work out for me. Yeah. Obviously, I went and started doing, you know, fighting and things of that nature, did MMA. Um, so with that, how did the transition from you being like, because I know how it was for me, was for him as, as athletes to, you know, put the helmet aside and start doing something new. How hard was that for you? It was difficult. I didn't watch football for a while. Still don't watch football. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't watch football know. for a while because I was going to workouts and I'm like, I'm better than him. Yep. You know what I mean? And then I had to get out of my own way and I had yep. to understand that it's not about being better. It wasn't. And so my nephew, I'll, I'll take you a little further back. My oldest nephew told me something when I was, uh, I think I was in college, my freshman year in college. I came home and uh, mm-hmm. I think my nephew, seven years old at the time, and I'll never forget this, he was music videos used to be popping Saturday morning, I'm home, music video on. I'm like, turn that off. I don't know, he was watching the video. I'm like, I don't wanna watch that. And he goes, why? I said, man, they got all that stuff on there, they shining, I don't got nothing. Yeah. And he said, God said, when it's your time, you'll have it. Don't mm-hmm. worry about it, don't be jealous of nobody else. And I don't know, I wasn't jealous, but that, that changed me back when I was 19 years old. Mm-hmm. I, I don't care about what nobody else has. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so for me, that transition from when I when I had to put it down, I didn't watch the sport. It was salty. But then I was like, you know what? I can't hate on somebody else. Yeah. Right? For because sure. Yeah, yeah. that's what it was for me. So I just said, okay, I got to take a break. I got to get my mind right. And I got to go be great at yeah. what I want to do. So, that I, so now I look at my life and I'm like, man, I wouldn't have been able to do any of this had I played yeah. football. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like I wouldn't have went to Qatar or Saudi Arabia or Mm -hmm. you know all these countries I've been able to travel to and you know, uh, it's like what? Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm So man, Australia, if I had, come on man. So so I'm thankful for the the fail that, but but now it's my greatest success. For sure. Me not playing in the NFL is my greatest success. The thing that's hurt me the most at Mm -hmm. the beginning of like what I thought it was gonna do has become the thing that has changed the trajectory of how I can sit here and talk to you guys about fitness and now entrepreneurship. Like, so sometimes I tell people fail forward, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but don't be afraid to fail. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, don't yeah. be afraid. Scared they scared to fail. Yeah. They scared to fail. But if you're afraid to shoot your shot, I, I just talked about this in another interview. It's like, you ain't, you heard it. Yeah. You're not going to make a shot. Yeah. That's where people fall short. Is yeah. they're just, it stifles them. You know, time. it's funny because when I do you watch do you watch TV at all? A, a very little, a little bit, right? Yeah, a little bit. That's my problem is because I I I can't watch TV. It's hard. I, I don't think I ever caught like I, I watched the Netflix thing that you did. Yeah, okay, that, okay, that, yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. But I really don't watch TV, so I think because of the fact that that is, I think that I was able to uh, progress a lot faster because every waking moment that I have, and I'm sure you're the same way. We're trying to get better, so 100%. I can't waste time. 
Yep. Yeah. I, I I echo that, and um, it gets me in trouble at home mm-hmm. with my wife, uh, and I, you know, we we because it's like it's like <laughs> yeah, it's like, babe, can you just enjoy being yeah. home and not Bro, be on the phone? And it's I'm like, glad. I hope my wife is listening. To yeah, this yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. not the only one. Yeah, but um, <laughs> but you know what, man? And so what I <clears throat> to that point for us, we got to find balance. Sure. Right, because that's not okay. Yeah. Right to to gain this and lose that. Mm-hmm is the worst thing ever, yeah. right? And I've seen it, right? It's like, it's not, is it really worth it at the mm-hmm. end of the day? So we just, we gotta learn how to take that same energy and craft to do the same thing when we get home. And so mm-hmm. that's that's the balance. But yes, I agree with you. I don't watch TV. Um, if I am watching TV, it's most of the time watching me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? If it's on- Studying your stuff. I'm, yeah, I'm- Studying your like, stuff. I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I hear you. You know, and so you, I find myself like we're sitting down and it's like I'm not tuned in, but I'm like I'm looking at the TV, but I'm looking through the TV. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because my, but <clears throat> you know, I've self-diagnosed myself with ADD. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I think every successful person. Yeah, I'm like, bro, like I just cannot turn off my brain. But then it's like, and I, and I, one thing that I'm, I'm like, we're on the curve, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't, if you guys hadn't read the book, The Slight Edge, I like, oh, no. I think this is super incredible. Slight it's like. Edge. Either you're on the curve of success or the curve of failure, mm-hmm. right? And so I'm, I'm, I'm. Y- y- what you do every day mm-hmm. is the compound interest effect of where you're going. And so that's when I'm. It's like okay, whether I'm either building towards that to my success, or I'm taking these little and I'm taking a lazy approach, mm-hmm. and then I, I'm gonna look up and wonder why I fail. Yeah. Well, what, what were you doing to yeah. to make it work, or what were you doing? To, because again, the, the 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 curve of success and curve of failure is where people see me at now, right? They're like, oh man, boss so lucky. And they don't know all the work, right? It was that chip, chip away to all these things we just talked about. Mm-hmm. So now to go backwards, you know what I mean? And so now I still, that, that I'm now right here today, that same thing exists no matter when you get to a new level, how, what exists? You know what I mean? Like, did I dream of like the reality, like the truth? I had a conversation with myself and I ended up telling my wife, I was like, I knew I was gonna be successful, mm-hmm. but I didn't know how it was gonna come, and I yeah. and some of the things that I'm doing right now, I couldn't have dreamed of, sure. but I put my head down and just worked. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's going back to that mindset. I, I go back when I was in high school uh, for you transfer. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and one of our players, you know, but he was kind of like talking smack, and he was like, "Oh, you think you're gonna be better than this player?" And I'm like, "Yeah, why not?" It's like, "Oh, he's one of the best players of all time." Like so. Yeah. And like you said, you see so things. Me. I didn't know what I'm doing. I'm working. With, me and Phil have been working together. He got me into the MMA world, which opened up doors. And I work with Navy SEALs and, yeah. and like top special four places. I'm a young black man from where we're from. Yeah. It ain't, and you, I don't know your upbringing. Yeah, yeah. If it's not a place where people look like me yeah. are going to be doing what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Like, I have kids that we mentor our old high school, like 60 kids, and they look at us. They used to ask questions like, how much y'all make? How much does this place cost? How much is this facility? Because they want to like learn, like, how can I be this? Mm-hmm. And that's motivating because. All do us didn't make it to the NFL, but we were successful in our own rights. Mm-hmm. And now, exactly, I love that. Now we're we're showing kids and people that to be successful isn't just through sports, mm-hmm. but sports teach us so much. But I love the fact that you said that is because now we have an opportunity because all we grew up when we don't have nothing is the way out is sports. Oh, yeah. But now the way out is using your in, in your IP right yep. and saying, man, we can. Just, I'm gonna have a conversation and I'm gonna be really good at journalism, like, and I'm gonna really just know how to talk. And but you're an MMA guy, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, but the ceiling on that doesn't. You, it's so high. Oh yeah. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? It's it's what you imagine. Like, it's what you imagine. 100. percent Like I didn't know I was gonna do a podcast. Yeah. But now I'm doing it. Yeah. You know I started off with after I was done fighting. I'm like okay I'm gonna coach. And when I started coaching, I'm like okay I'm I'm building up a brand here. Okay. Yeah. So now all right let's start capitalizing on this. Let's start doing other things. Yeah. I watch successful people on a daily basis. Right. You talked about balance though. Right, and I know that's a common question that I get all the time. Mm-hmm. How do you balance your life right now? You know what, man? Good answer. I mean, good question. I don't got the answer. Yeah, uh, it's tough. How do I balance my life right now? You know, man, I, I, I'm trying to find my time or like with my wife and just putting down my phone mm-hmm. and just saying, can we just have, a, like, like tonight, it's phone off. Yeah. I, I guaranteed her that I'm coming home after my last call. I think is at six thirty. I will not pick up the phone. I'm turning the phone on. Do not disturb. And I I despise do not disturb for my business for myself, right? Because I'm like, yo, anything can happen, right? There's an email, like you know what I mean. And then, but it's like 
I, I, I have to take time to work on the things. Like when I, my mentor, when I came up, I'll tell you a true story. My mentor, <clears throat> when I opened my gym, his wife used to hang out in my gym. He's one of my closest friends to this day. Mm -hmm. And Steve tried to give me a full training facility. But his wife used to hang out at the gym, but he was always grinding. He's a pilot and a developer. Mm -hmm. And very successful, preferred, one of the first successful people that took me under their wing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when you're talking like, that's when that, that money moment going back when yeah. I was talking about people around you. And I'll never forget Steve. Steve tried to give me a gym and I knew I wasn't ready. Yeah. One of his, he was a landlord, mm -hmm. literally a full gym. They left it. It was, I think it was 15,000, 17,000 was to run it, but it was, it was $2,000 in a negative. I didn't have a $2,000 to cover per month uh, on a, you know what I mean? But I believe, and I was like, man, I'm not ready for this. Um, but to the moment, um, I shouldn't have said his name because now I'm about to tell the true story, but he wouldn't care. You know, Steve was like, yo, I worked so hard. I lost my wife. Right, but because it was always the grind, it was always the go. He went from pilot to when he got home, he was developing, and when he was developing, he working on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so I saw it. I saw that in him, and he he. I remember Steve saying, "Don't do this better than me." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So now that echo has been in my head of like, take time for your family. He will go on a one vacation a year, but he's like, yeah. take time for your family. Don't don't do do. Do this better. And so now I, I'm hearing him more than ever going, boss, do this better. Don't you know what I mean? And so and and again, she 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 wanted to come back later, right? And, but uh he was you know, at that point I but one of the things that stood out was you work so hard and then sometimes you lose everything. Yeah. And so now I don't wanna lose everything because and then gain nothing at the end of the day. That's that's similar to like what you say, you gotta work hard but you gotta work smart. Yeah. You know, and I think that when you have that ability to organize your life, that's really where it changed the game for me. You know, organizational skills, having yeah. a having a tactical approach to the system system that we're trying to to put together. Yeah. You know, so yeah. with that, you know, I do want to I do want to thank you on 100% for coming out here. For sure. You came to me. Here, thank so. you for coming yeah, to me. For sure. But I want to say sure. something before you say that. I know my superpower. Yeah. I know my kryptonite. There you go. Right. So when you said there's something things, bro, I'm just going to be honest. And this is probably bad, but it's so honest to me. I'm just not doing certain things. Mm -hmm. You said, oh, man, the organization, this, this, this. I try. Like, yeah. I try. <laughs> that ain't my superpower, bro. That's the last thing I want to do is get on a computer. Yeah, and no, sit no, there no. and type away. So I, I think people have to learn what they're really, really good at. Sure, building that. I understand it all. I, yeah. I've had to run Facebook ads. I've had to put a SWOT analysis together. I've had to, you know, build a deck. It was trash, but I had to. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. then when you get somebody that knows how to do shit better, then I'm like, let me focus on my superpowers. Not to say that you can't let those weaknesses get better. Yes. You feel what I'm saying? Yes. Hence leadership, hence all those things I'm working on, but you have to understand what you're really, really good at. Okay. Build on that, understand what you're weak at, and build on that, but understand like this one, this, and I've, I've changed, right? But some things will, some things will just never cross. I, as much as I want certain things to cross over and I want to be this super organized person, I'm like, I love organization. I, I thrive off walking in. For instance, my closet. I love walking in and seeing everything color coded and all that shit. But <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. It, it's it's together. But I didn't do it. I know. But, but see, here's what I'm saying. You see what I'm saying? No, no, and so you. for I me, like, that's my thing. It's like. I love organization. I yeah. love structure. I love it. Mm -hmm. But I do know that where I'm trying to go, I can't do it by myself is what yeah. I'm saying. You see what I'm saying? Like go back to football. Like, yeah. You you play linebacker, yeah. you ain't gonna do it at the end. I can't yeah. do it all. You, you got a team. So I know team. my superpower. Like yeah. So anyway, go ahead. No, you got a team. And that's the that's what I'm saying. Even though you're not organizing yourself, you put together a team to help organize. Yeah, but I'm, I'm I'm mentally organized. I just don't want to. Put That's it, all that I matters. I just don't know how to. Oh, put it on paper. Or I, put it on. The, I know how. Just yeah, it's just not don't my want strong to. suit. Yeah, for sure. Because I would rather go try to figure it out. Yeah. Like tonight, I got a dinner mm -hmm. about a big play. Well, I know that I'm not about to do the deck for the big play. I'm just not. That's just like I'm not doing that shit. And then, as much as I try, yeah. I've tried. <laughs> 
And I'm telling you, you and I, it's not that I failed. I was just like, this is not representing who I am. Let me talk to you. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is like, what I, I think people understand that superpowers understand your weaknesses and build on those weaknesses. I'm not sure. telling you to let them sit. Yeah. But also, a lot of people don't sit in their superpowers and start to, because people try to diminish your superpower. Something when you're really, really strong at something, they try to tear you down. Mm -hmm. Don't let nobody tear you down and then work on your weaknesses, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Because some of the things that you may be super great at that propel you forward, I can't take that away anymore. Mm -hmm. I learn who I, I know who I am. I know what I am. And so if someone says something different, I'm not, especially if I'm living in my superpower, I'm not going to accept that. I'm not living in that. You, if that make any sense. And then the things that I accept are the things that I need to change and I know and I understand. But then I also understand that that just may not be what I need to do. You know what I'm saying? I had a CEO coming here this morning. He just, he, his news will come out soon, right? <laughs> Young boy. Yeah. And, uh, He's like, bro, like, he, he he literally told me, it's so crazy, he's like, yo, my boy is just, he's a C-level, he, he he just won't, he, he's CEO, see, chief of staff, mm -hmm. he's reached his ceiling in my company, he'll never go higher. Mm -hmm. and, but he's so great for that. Mm -hmm. But he's like, boss, I can't do chief, I, like, that ain't my thing, I don't know how to manage those people. And he literally, we're in the office talking about that this morning. Yeah. And he's like, yo, my boy does these deals, but I think he's reached his ceiling for what he brings to the company, and I love him, but he'll stay here. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, but I need him here, because yeah, I can't do that. He's number three, number two, he's just the best that would But I can't do that. Yeah. So understanding where you are, mm -hmm. and I was like, damn, that's so, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. interesting. But he was like, yo, my, he's killing it. Yeah. And, he, and, he's thrive, and he's thriving at his job. Mm -hmm. There's not, there was no negative to yeah. what he was doing, because he was like, yo, I need that line item. I need this line item. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Like those line items are important because I know I can't do it. Mm -hmm. You you understand what I'm saying? And so that shit was so inspiring to me this morning. It was like, damn, he knows he's positioned himself as who he is. This goes, I I know I'm not. Yeah, I can't do chief of staff. Mm -hmm. So to attest to that, and I, like we talked about being successful, people seeing where you're at now, Kevin Hart and all the other yeah. stories. It's like. Do you think that some people have this facade, like you said, you gotta know where you play? Because I know there's this big thing. You gotta be a CEO, you gotta be an entrepreneur, you gotta have 10 streams of income. And like Jay-Z said on the song Hollywood with Beyonce, it ain't for everybody. Do you yeah. feel like some people gotta, like you said, be honest with themselves and say, maybe I, I'm not that guy who can run a multi-level business. Yes. Like you said, he could be the this level. It may be, and be amazing. He's amazing at it. So you think And, and you're, the, you're the you're the you're the you're the you're the pin the needle pusher of the business, right? Mm -hmm. At that task, right? And so one thousand percent. Like in my role with Kev, I know where I fit. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you got to know where you fit in. I'm not going and producing and doing certain like that's not my lane with Kev. As much as ideas that I think I have, it, that's not my thing. You feel what I'm saying? So you have to know where you fit in into a system. And I, the system I fit in is is that. And I'm not I'm not trying to go do with perfect example, Kev. I, there's certain conversations I'm just not a part of. Do me and him talk about everything? I will want. Yes, we do, but. There's certain things that we just not doing. I'm not doing. I'm not getting involved in because it's over my. That's not what I do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Can I understand it and want to know more? Absolutely. Yeah. But is that my thing? Absolutely. Yeah, not. It wouldn't be authentic anyways at no. that point. No. I got you. So I want to know. This is a, usually a common question I ask all the guests. Every successful person that I that I talk to has some sort of routine, right? And it could be as simple as I just wake up and brush my teeth and get up out of the bed, whatever. What does your daily routine actually look like? Because I know you train, what, almost every day, right? Yeah, pretty much. What's your daily routine look like, and what do you not go without in the morning and at night? Um, it, it, this has been the way um, 4 a.m. wake up, 4.30, my, my, my wife's like, why, why you just can't lay in the bed? Now, after the baby... I've been laying in the bed a little bit more. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got a new kid, so I can't I, just I was leave. I about to ask like you about that. <laughs> yeah. That um, sleep is, is minimal right but, now. But it all started, man. I was thinking back the other day. My, my brother came in town. And he was like, you know, my mom passed away. Not a down moment, but, you know, I lost my mom at a young age. And so um, I ended up moving up with my brother a little later in life. And I think I was like 10th grade. And the sacrifice I had to make every morning in order for my brother to drop me off at school was waking up at 4.30 in the morning and getting to the gym, working out. Um, strength coach was there. He worked out, so I started. He was the defensive coordinator, actually, and uh, so I, 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 I forgot about this. Mm -hmm. So now, I knew that 
I, people always ask me, why you wake up so early? And I, my brother reminded me, he used to drop, he, that was the only way I could get to school because I didn't live in the district, mm -hmm. right? And so he would drop me off at school at four in the morning. So I wake up, you know, one of the things that's most consistent in my life is waking up early. You know what I mean? And, you know, uh, lately, depending on how cold it is, I thought I'd go start my car. Uh, and then <laughs> we live in LA, but yeah. um, I, I'll go downstairs, I try to pray in the morning that's one of my things i try to get my prayer out in the morning especially if i forgot my prayer at night mm -hmm. um I, my, my refrigerator no cap is full of c4 um, oh, yeah. so i you know i had yeah to, yeah. I, yeah 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 so because i wanted on the drive right i wanted on the drive um how far is your drive from there 20 minutes my mm -hmm. house is 20 minutes right 15 minutes 15 mm -hmm. 20 minutes but uh and then um one of the things that's super important to me is talking to my family in the morning mm -hmm. so i try to get up super super early because that's my, that's everything to me. Yeah, you know what I mean. If it's not my 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 immediate family, my wife and son now, um, I I talk to my brothers in the morning and we're oh, talking yes. about like they're in the gym. You know, like we we literally are. They're my best motivation, right? Mm -hmm. They're in there on a. Uh, they're in Texas, uh -huh. so they're texting me. If they're up at four thirty-five, it's two thirty. So I'm like, oh, so if man. I get a text at three, sometime I'm like, I'm late. You know uh, what I mean? Because yeah. that's always the game. So mm -hmm. I try to get a great conversation in with them about what they're doing. One of my brothers is an executive. He's a uh, chief operating officer at a big um, hospital in Austin, gotcha. and uh, one of my brothers owns a, a large real estate company oh, in, nice. um, in in Houston. And so those are I'm, I'm I'm hearing what they're doing in their business, and then obviously being an entrepreneur for the last eleven years, mm -hmm. I've never went worked in corporate America. So I'm trying to soak up as much game from the people that I trust the most, right? Yet I trust that that's a different conversation. I'm you know, but the people that I know that without a shadow of a doubt, I can without unequivocally in, in, in love me the way unequivocally love me the way that I know, I'm like. Let me, what what advice? What are you guys sharing? What's the motivation in the morning? So I get that. Yeah. Pull up to the gym. Most of the guys are here at the gym. Chris, Kalani, Joe is new to the team. Sade, and we we sweat it out. Nice. Yeah. We try to get it in early before everybody gets here. And then, but now things are so crazy. People are all in the gym. So you, if you're not in the gym at four o'clock, <laughs> swear to God, it's it's we the five a.m. class is popping. Not class, but clients. Nice. People want to. I mean, more people. You'll be surprised how many people would rather get up at five a.m. and get yeah, a workout yeah. in in the morning. When I started, done. when I started, when I opened up my boot camp, I opened up my gym at twenty-two years old. Okay. Um, when I opened it up, the main class was my boot camp at five thirty in the morning, and I, it was packed. Twenty, thirty people in there. Yeah. Just killing it. I'm like, man, y'all really want to get up this early? I'm yeah. Like, I'm good because I get up at four thirty also. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I want to get everything situated for myself. Okay. You yeah. know, um, so. I did want to ask you one more thing, right? Which is, it's kind of like, you got to think about this one too. I'm, I'm going to give you some time. But it doesn't have to be physical, right? What does a strong person mean to you? Like, what's the definition of a strong individual? A strong individual. <clears throat> Mental, for, like mentally strong. You know, um, because a lot of things are going to attack us throughout the day, mm -hmm. right? Um, whether it be conversations, um, it's not. It does. It has nothing to do with physical. Yeah. It has everything to do with mental, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't know what you've been through. Mm -hmm. I have no clue what you've been through until you tell me and what you've been through. And so anybody in this room, and so mental strength mm -hmm. is is something that's I'm I'm admiring and admiration of, like sure. you know. Um, that you, you see the perseverance for people, you know, um, dealing with uh, so much un that doesn't meet the eye. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, not a downer moment, but I lost a close friend this week. You know, uh -huh. um, very close friend to me this week. You know, and uh, it hurts. You know, it, it hurts. But you you got to go. What's the mental check in for me to hold myself accountable because I'm hurt doesn't mean I don't go to work. For sure. You feel what I'm saying? And because I'm hurt doesn't mean I give this bad energy to other people don't go to work. You feel what I'm saying? Because they didn't sign up for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they didn't sign up. So so mentally strong for me, I, it, it's mental strength, mm -hmm. right? And so what I again it goes back to what we're trying to sell here is what we're it, it's it's what we give. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I want to give people mental strength to continue to persevere. And I think mm -hmm. that's because when you're mentally strong, a lot of things will come and try to knock you off the rocker. Sure. You know what I'm saying? But if you can withstand 
the windstorm <clears throat> or the tornado, you know, that's it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, just to finish off that note, um, I teach part time at a college back home, and Phil comes in to guest lectures. And even though he's a strength coach, he gives a lot of knowledge, and I do a lot of knowledge on, like, say, the mental game. And I, I use a saying, like, I say, life's like a battery. You need the negative and positive to still have power. I love it. So I want to ask you, because we talked about this earlier, about failure. I like to embrace failure. So what would you say? To a person who's been failing right now, they're watching this like, mm-hmm. I failed 20 times in a row and they want to give up right now, what would you give them? To keep so up? assess where you are in your failure process, right? I think it's super, super important to look at if you fail so much, are you in the right game, mm-hmm. right? You have to truly look at your failure and go, it, it, you know, if you're trying to be a football player, and you're 28 and you keep failing and you keep going to camps, you obviously need to look at yourself. And you got to self-assess, right? You, yeah, you know what I mean? A couple people like that yeah, actually still. Right? You, so, <laughs> 32 so, still yeah. trying to make it. Uh, if, if you're failing at the fitness business and you're passionate or if you're failing at entrepreneurship, <clears throat> you know, um, Eric Smith, or I, I think it was Eric Smith, the Google CEO, he said most businesses don't succeed, right? And most people fail, but can you, you, you got to remind yourself that you can succeed. And so again, <clears throat> underselling, over uh, uh, undervalue overselling you feel what i'm saying and you just got to look and assess and see where you are if you keep failing you know what i mean and you're and you're not in the trajectory and you never see growth you gotta you gotta either back off change or look at where you are or surround yourself get a mentor look at how you are going about your approach in order to game yourself up you know if you're equipping yourself to to truly see some strides and some success um you know in in your journey no matter what it is because fitness is just so small you, again, it's so small, you know, of a day, yeah. you know, working out. And <clears throat> so for me, failure is a, is a mindset and, and, and pers- you're pushing through that is, a, is, is the biggest component. Of, mm-hmm. But it's also the biggest component of why you're successful. You are, you fail your way to the top. So sure. I believe you fail your way to the top. Love it. Yeah. Love it. But don't give up. I, number one thing is if you believe in it and you love it, don't give up. You know what I mean? Shit. Don't quit your day job if you obviously if you keep if you keep failing and you can't pay your bills. Don't yeah. you know? Don't be oblivious. But yeah, man, that's it. I think you fail your way to the top if you believe in something strong enough. Um, stick with it. Don't let nobody take you off your rocker. It may take again. It may take you ten years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Passion projects, uh, you know, sometimes turn into you some of the biggest money making opportunities or and, and philanthropic opportunities Very that true. you ever saw. So. Um, you know, that's it for me. I, I think that's, you know, that's that's my piece of advice. No, that's perfect. <laughs> Don't end it on that one. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do want you to, if you can, just shout out what you got going on, if you, anything like social media, stuff like that. Yeah, um, I'm Ron Ball, Silver Line Man, and uh, I don't know if you know about me, but uh, if you don't know, welcome to the guy that's just the guy that's trains the mind and the body to follow. Nah, man, um, uh, w- just train is is the handle uh working on a bunch of stuff the next chapter for us is to share entrepreneurship working on financial fitness i'll leave you with this your your financial fitness and your physical fitness journey are just the same you want gains in the gym um you got to make that sacrifice and not eat that food you want gains in a bank account you may not be able to uh, buy those jordans uh you know you got to sacrifice so uh, that's the next chapter of me man i don't really like selling myself to you on anything other than you have it you can push it you can get it all you just got to be willing to sacrifice who you are for who you can become. Nice, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. That's awesome. You guys take something from that. It's the Roo Strong Podcast. I'll see you guys next time. We're out.